Hey everyone, happy Tuesday. Today I have a video for you that is all about tips for making your very long indoor training rides better, more engaging, and more useful. This is inspired by a comment that I got during Sunday's live stream when I did the Zwift Uber pretzel, which was 8,200 feet of gain. I did 100 miles total on that bike, streamed indoors in just over six hours. That was a slog, and it got me thinking about some better tips to make your indoor training uh, better. So I've already made a video about just indoor training tips in general. So if that's what you're looking for, it's in the description. But this video in particular is about tips for really long rides, two, two and a half hours all the way through six, seven, you know, as long as you want to go, basically. So with that said, uh, we're diving in. One, use your long indoor rides to really dial in your nutrition specifically and test some things that are either harder to do outdoors or that you can't do on shorter rides. So A and B here refer to quantity of food and timing. So everybody's a little bit different in terms of how many calories they can intake, but a great starting point um, is about 250 calories per hour. Some people, that's gonna be about as many calories as you can intake before you start to get queasy. And the important thing to remember here is when we're doing long efforts, you can do things for one hour or two hours, maybe even three hours that you can't do at four, five, six, and seven. But taking in nutrition consistently and steadily uh, at a good interval throughout the workout is really crucial to making it so that after those initial glycogen stores start to, to get a little bit low, you still have food coming in that's being processed that are really gonna take you through hours four, five, and six. Uh, so like I said, 250 calories an hour is a great starting point. If you start to find yourself doing more and more of these long rides, you might up that by like 25 calories an hour each ride and see what you can get to. For me, it's about 300, 300 calories an hour is very comfortable. 325 is kind of my upper limit. Uh, timing. Every 20 minutes is pretty easy to do. I think every 10 is ideal because then it's super consistent. Best part about being indoors here is you can really get specific, right? Because you're not tied to traffic or anything like that. Keep your water bottle, keep your nutrition ready, set a timer every 20 minutes, take your prescribed amount, and you can get pretty scientific with it. Uh, as for what to eat, um, scratch and tailwind, both the caffeinated and non-caffeinated are both really excellent. But honestly, for a lot of my indoor riding, I keep it cheap and I keep it basic. And what I do is I put honey in my water bottles. And for me, it's 20 grams of honey is 60 calories. I don't know if that's all honey or just the honey I have, um, which works out to 300 calories an hour with 100 grams in a 24 ounce bottle. Uh, the sugar ratios might not be perfect, but for just my day to day riding and training, it works great. Uh, gummy bears are another super cheap, great sugar source. Number two, airflow matters. And I know you think this is just gonna be about fans. Don't skip this yet, there's more to it than that. On the fan note, a couple things. One, big fan front and center is always great. Underrated fan that a lot of people don't have is a fan in the rear. It's, um, obviously it just keeps you cooler and adds more airflow in general. Um, it also keeps your clothes drier. I found it does a great job of cooling your bibs and your back, which the front fan never gets. Uh, and then the third thing, especially for triathletes who are riding in the arrow position, if you have a, front, a fan front and low, uh, your arrow bars can actually block that fan. So I'm considering adding a fan top dead center as well. But two, and this is kind of the overlooked one, I very rarely see people talk about this, uh, oxygen and CO2. If you're training in a very small room like this for an hour, yeah, it's not a huge deal. But when you start working hard for three, four, five hours, the oxygen levels in the room will actually come down. The CO2 goes up. You, you inhale oxygen, you process oxygen. Aerobic processes take place in your body and you breathe out CO2. So what do we know? So looking a little bit of data on your screen, um, the, this was a study done of some fitness centers that tracked CO2 parts per million concentration throughout the day. Um, the ratios are different between all three and the day-to-day -day operations are a little bit different, but the key takeaway is just the effect of having people in a building working out increases CO2. So what do we know about that? The effects of CO2, essentially, the short version is, as CO2 concentration goes up, it becomes harder to concentrate. Your cognitive functions go down. What does that mean? When your cognitive functions go down and you, you fatigue mentally, 
your ability to do cardiovascular aerobic work goes down, which is really weird. So like, as you're more tired, your ability to focus, your ability to choose to continue to work, your rate of perceived exertion, it all becomes harder. So as CO2 increases, your workouts become harder. Rooms like this are not like hermetically sealed, but if you have the door shut, you have the window closed, and you're working out for five or six hours, CO2 is definitely gonna go up. So get a fan that exhausts air or draws cool air in, totally worth it. Number three, pace yourself properly. This is something that applies to outdoor workouts as well as indoor workouts, but indoor workouts are a great way to practice this. And then it makes your indoor rides better and you can apply it to outdoor if you also ride outdoors. So I don't wanna dive super deep into like normalized power versus average power. And it's kind of a moot point whether you have a power meter on your bike or not. But the one of the key points here is that generally speaking, it takes less physiological toll on your body to work at a steady effort rather than to work at an effort which kind of has these like short spikes in it. You know, if you're doing a workout, that's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about just like going on a long ride like in Zwift or something. Your goal is to keep that generally an even effort. Even those little tiny spikes where like if you get dropped off of your pace group and you need to sprint to catch up, they might not be hard an hour in or even two hours in. But if you do 10 or 15 or 20 of those, your normalized power goes up. It takes a physiological toll on your body that you wouldn't otherwise have. So keeping your effort consistent is really, really important. The percentage that you can maintain across long periods sort of depends on your conditioning. I, for me, a good number is 70 to 75%. I can maintain 75% roughly of my FTP for you know three to six hours pretty steadily. You need to do some of your own testing and figure out what works for you. The key here though is you're gonna be faster by doing like 75% steady rather than starting off at 90% for an hour and 10 or 15 and then dropping down to like 60% or 55% for the next four or five hours. There's a little bit of an asterisk here where if you're doing like a climbing course, yes, it's more efficient to put in effort at the climbs. I know that, some of you know that, um, but we're talking about like physiologically, even efforts are faster. Number four way to make your long indoor rides better is incorporate drills. There's kind of two reasons for this. I touched on drills in the other video that I made, but I'm gonna touch on them here for the same reason and another reason. So being indoors, affords you the time to do a lot of those drills. So you can focus on making your uh, your pedaling efficiency better. You can focus on you know improving your, your actual cadence, your stroke, your smoothness out of the saddle. You can improve all of those things. That's great. The other reason that I really like doing those on long rides is kind of twofold. One, especially the standing drills, just getting out of the saddle and being in a physically new position is really important. There's so many little micro adjustments that we make out on the road, whereas indoors, you're, you're just locked into one position. And even people who are comfortable on the road and have a great position out on the road, sometimes you can take that exact same position and bring it indoors, and it's not comfortable to you. The second really important thing is drills help with mental engagement. If you go into a ride that's five hours long and you have nothing to do except focus on the fact that it's five hours long, your mental engagement is gonna to need to be tougher than mine is, that's for sure. But if you can start breaking that five hour ride into um, you know, 10, 30 minute blocks where you focus on maybe different things every 10 or 15 minutes, it really helps with the mental game. Uh, and then lastly, number five, and this sounds like a soft tip, but it's actually one of the most important ones for me, is to understand that your indoor workouts are different than your outdoor workouts. So for those of you who ride both indoors and outdoors, I think it's really easy to, to come indoors and be really frustrated with the results that you're getting. But the other way of thinking about it is that indoor riding is in a lot of ways, objectively harder than outdoor riding. Not always, but in a lot of ways. Um, for instance, when we're outdoors, we essentially never pedal 98 or 99 or almost 100% of the time, but we do indoors. So, when you can do a three to five hour ride outdoors without any problems, and then you come in and you struggle with a three hour ride, it's because the ride experience is different. Secondly, I talked about having the fan in the rear and I talked about how it kept your, your clothes drier. The other important thing to remember is that 
Um, that physical comfort is a really important factor. I know people don't ever need like chamois cream or anything outdoors, but do need it indoors. In the chat, people were asking me if I've ever considered a rocker plate. And the answer is I've considered it, but generally speaking, I'm comfortable indoors. But for a lot of people, rocker plates are basically a savior because it allows you a little bit of flexibility, a little bit of motion. It makes your indoor riding more engaging. And then lastly, that mental engagement thing that we talked about is so key. The reason that I chose to stream on Sunday is because I was able to talk to people like you the entire time. I've done a three hour, 45 minute trainer road by myself before, and it was absolutely dreadful. So whatever your source of motivation is, I highly encourage you to actually put some real thought into what it is you're going to use to motivate yourself to keep going. There's only so much music you can listen to, though I do have my Spotify playlist linked below if you want to listen to what I listen to. Podcasts are great, but they don't really have the energy and engagement that I need. Whatever that thing is for you that you choose to, to engage with, really put some thought into it. So yeah, that's it for this video. I wanted to give you some stuff that was specific to long indoor rides that I hope will help you out because long indoor rides, I don't think get enough love because they're hard, but man, they're rewarding if you can get through them. Uh, if you've ever done any long rides and you have tips, feel free to leave them down in the comments for everybody else and for me, because I will certainly appreciate them too. If you want to join me for a trainer road group workout, it's every Sunday at 11 a.m. Pacific. There's a link in the description for that as well. We're going to do a recovery week this week because my legs are still pretty toast. Thanks for those of you who joined uh, yesterday, though. Really, really got me through that workout. That's for sure. All right. Have a good week. I will see you next week. Hope your training is going well. Bye.